So hi everyone. How to make a premium golden test or to be accurate, how to write tests that will look like your application is running on an actual device. My name is Mathieu Pernel. I'm a mobile developer working with cross-platform technologies, mostly Flutter. I work for BAM. We are a mobile development agency based in Paris. Um, we build up uh, from product design to code using uh, React Native and Flutter. I'm currently working on uh, La Compagnie des Alpes. It's uh, the company that manage most ski resorts in France. Uh, we are doing an application for each one of them. Well, it's actually more like eight applications using white labels. So next winter, if you go skiing in the Alps and you use your phone to badge at the bottom of the ski slope, you could tell your friend that it's developed with Flutter. But please avoid using the app while skiing. It won't prevent fall damage. <laughs> so as Flutter developers, uh, we target multiple platforms and devices. For example, I just create an app. It's fairly basic. There are material widgets. The content is centered. We can see a text field, a photo. And when I tap on the text field, a keyboard appears. This app should run on iPhones, which have notches and gesture indicator. On Androids, which often have punch holes. On foldable phones, on tablets, on laptops, and even on watches. So how do I know if the app will look good on every device? Well, we write a test. Flutter brings us great tools for that, widget test and golden files. So you write one of them, you render any widget, and you expect that it will look like a previously taken screenshot. Et voilà we have a pixel perfect generated image of our application. But it doesn't look like our application. Uh, the text is made of squares, uh, there is no shadow, and the size is not good. Could we generate a more realistic image? Well, we can. eBay led the way with the package Golden Toolkit. So let's use it and add visual accuracy to our test. First, by using eBay font loader, uh, we can get rid of those CI proof squares. Uh, just note that you will need to add the font file into your Flutter asset. Okay, cool. Uh, then, even if it might take more time to render, we can create an image loader that will find every image widget and pre cache them. This will ensure that every image is displayed on the golden file before it's rendered. So here you can see it. And finally, by using debug values from Flutter painting and foundation, we can enable shadow and set a target platform like iOS. But make sure that you reset those values for the test end, otherwise you will get an assertion throw. Cool, our test is much better looking, but we are not there yet. Uh, what's more, our app, our test doesn't represent the diversity of the application of the devices the application will be run on. So we need to dig a little bit more. That's why uh, we created adaptive test. To simplify the concept, we can start with two devices, an iPhone 13 and a Google Pixel 5. We do not want to write a test for each device. So the trick is to use test variant. Here we are defining two test variants, uh, target platform iOS and Android and the test will be executed for each variant. So it generates two images, and each 
in each one of them, we can see the specificities of the test variant, like the position of the title in the app bar. Then instead of using um, target platform variants, we can define an object that will represent the physical constraints of a device. For example, the screen size and the pixel density. Then we need to configure the test window to which the test is bind. And when, when we run it, uh, we have tests that starting to look like devices. We can add more device related data to our object. For example, the safe area padding, uh, border radius of the screen or the notch size. To visualize them in our test, we can wrap our application into a stack and add on top of it widget that will paint the physical constraints. So that's progress. Now the tricky part, keyboards. To better understand how Flutter deals with keyboards, I recommend uh, Craig's video on uh, media queries. So first, uh, we have to add a new configuration to our test windows with view inset and padding. Then to render the keyboard in our test, uh, we can use image of, of them. And luckily, we know how to render image in test now. And then for it to be handled in a test, uh, we can create a keyboard handler. It will add a listener to the focus manager class. And for each event, it will get the focus widget. Then it check if it's an editable text, for example, a text field. And if so, we call configure test window with all the open keyboard data. And we display the keyboard image uh, at the top of the stack. So here you have it, uh, tests that are keyboard opening proof. So the benefits of those tests, first, um, the syntax is quite simple. Um, if you write a test uh, with the appropriate variant, you can just uh, render a widget uh, with a good wrapper. Then you take a screenshot. Then you can just tap on the text field and take another screenshot. Because if the tests are simple to write, we will write more of them. So here is the result. Um, with this, your team is able to quickly see how the app will look like on every device, in addition to prevent visual regressions. Uh, another benefit is pull request reviews, because you can easily see what your teammates are working on. So to wrap it up, um, I made a package available on PubDev, so you can try it on your application. And if you want to take a look at the GitHub repository, you can see how it works under the hood. And any suggestions or contribution is more than welcomed. So thank you for having me. Hope you liked it.